Ooh, I have to close these windows. Hold on one second. <laughs> it's much colder than I realized outside. Hold on. Ooh, way too cold for that today. <laughs> Yesterday was nice. Way too cold for that. All right, so I'm going to be starting to get back into the swing of doing videos every day, hopefully. Um, life has been a little crazy, a little stressful, but need to get back into uh, what we were doing before. So today I was requested to do, to take time and kind of explain the face products that we have today, meaning like our foundations and our BB creams and everything. So that is what I'm going to spend a lot of time on today. Maybe we'll do an eye look, not really sure, but we're going to focus on that. I have bubble paper below me, or whatever you call that stuff. Okay, so the first thing that you always want to do that I already did, and it's in the bathroom because I already did it, is you want to spray your face after you clean it with rose water. So rose water will actually um, help close your pores. So after you wash your face and you've cleaned out all that dirt, Use the rose water, spray it on your face, it'll help close those pores so it's not absorbing as much of the dirt and grime in your makeup. Because once you wash it, what's the point if you're putting it right back in? So we need to start to create a way to get all the dirt and grime out slowly by slowly, slowly, slowly until it's completely gone. So once you do that, spray the rose water, it'll stay, make the pores smaller so it'll be harder for them to get in. And then you put the primer on your face so that it then fills those pores and creates like a smooth surface so then once that smooth surface is created then your face will be completely completely protected so wash rose water and then make sure you have your primer and that will protect you from everything all right so we're gonna start with our primer this is our primer and you do not need a lot a little bloop on there. So we're just going to take our primer and just spread it all over our face. So again, this is creating a barrier so everything that you've washed off and you've cleared those pores out, they're empty. So now you need to put this on to help smooth everything out. Hang up. Give me one second. I'll be right back. All right, sorry about that. Probably like, uh, is she there? I forgot to take my makeup off, <laughs> which was just really eyeshadow and uh, my concealer underneath, but I forgot to take it off. So what we've done so far is discuss that um, we just put primer on so that we're protecting our face from our makeup and everything so we have clean pores. And the first thing I do is I work with our concealer. So actually I'm going to go a little backwards. I'm going to do BB cream first so we can see the coverage without concealer because with BB cream by itself just gives you a nice smooth tone. It doesn't subtract all of the imperfections and all of the redness, but it gives you a nice healthy glow because it is a moisturizer. And then it also kind of smooths everything out a little bit. So it's a moisturizer. BB cream is a moisturizer that is tinted and also has SPF 25 in it. So it'll protect your face throughout the day. So it's kind of a cool, funky way to give your face a nice glow because it is a dewy look. Um, a way to protect your face from the sun. And then it's also a way to moisturize your skin all day. So it's like instead of putting on your moisturizer. So the color I use is Bisque. This is our BB cream. So first I'm going to go in with a brush and 
and just put a thin coat all over. Because as you're trying all this makeup, and every time I do my makeup, I always try different things. So I'm trying something different right now. Changing my lighting on my phone because it was on the darkest. All right. So as you can see, completely made a nice clean slate. The only issue is you can still see some of my redness here. So I want to go in with the beauty blood. Blood. <laughs> Sometimes that happens. But our beauty blender. And I just want to go into those spots. And I want to get rid of some of that redness. Because just like eyeshadow, when you use eyeshadow, if you go and you blot the eyeshadow on, it's a very different look than if you go and you like swipe it back and forth. I'll show you what I mean. I'll show you that today. So I'm just going in where I have my redness. I'm trying to eliminate that. some bad redness up here as well so I want to get rid of this so see how shiny my face is that's the dewy look that it gives and it has a dewy look not because it makes your skin look oily that is not what it looks like it's dewy in the idea that it gives it a nice refreshed kind of highlight feel it makes your skin look super healthy So that just helped a lot. So it's not a full coverage, and it's super light. What I mean by not a full coverage is like you can still see that, you can still see my freckles, you can still see the natural highlights and lowlights to my actual skin, unlike foundation where you wouldn't get that. So, and also you'll still see, which is the one thing that bugs me, is these dark circles I have underneath which is what I'm trying to eliminate without using concealer all right so when you first put it on it feels very thick and moist and sticky totally normal just like moisturizer is and then once it dries and absorbs into your skin it literally feels like you just have moisturized skin it doesn't feel oily or sleeky it doesn't feel really anything bad it just feels like you have good soft hydrated skin which is great so put on as much coverage as i could with the bb cream could i go out like this absolutely i would be totally happy with this coverage i'm totally fine with that the one thing i just want to show is using concealer the differences you get so i'm going to do this half of my face with the concealer and this half without it just to show the difference and then i'm going to obviously go in and do this side too so where did i put it Oh, can you tell me, I lost my favorite lipstick for the longest time. It was um, my lipstick, the well-to-do. I finally found it. I think it's actually in my jacket here. I'll have to pull it out. We're going to use that color today. So I'm just going to go in my concealer. Okay. 
just using that much. More than I need, I'm sure. Still trying to learn. And the idea of how much is needed, I'm just going to go in, I'm going to do this side. I have to look in the mirror when I get close to my eye here because I always get nervous. Oh, my bad. Let me turn. Let's see if I can turn the volume off. Okay. My apologies. I just downloaded an app. It's the I Wish or Wish app or whatever it's called. It is deadly. Don't do it. Just don't. Say you did and do and don't. I'm just going to get right under here and right here. And this is just to eliminate some of that extra redness. And again, you saw how much was on my hand. Haven't even used half of it. How ridiculous is that? One day I will learn. So I don't usually go up here, but the reason I did is I really need to get my eyebrows done. So this is going to help create like a good effect. Hey, hey, hey. Okay, so what I've done so far is I've added... <clears throat> I started with washing my face, just forgot to wipe off my eyeshadow on the top, and um, did that. Sprayed it with rose water, which allows your pores to get much smaller, so once you eliminate all that dirt out of your face, you now have like holes where your pores were, which is great because you're eliminating dirt off your face. So then you go, just do like three or four spritz of the rose water, and it'll actually cause your pores to get smaller. And it will also fill it with really good nutrients like the rose water um, and vitamins and everything like that that comes from it naturally. And then I went in and then covered that with primer to protect your face. So I did the BB cream, did the full face with the BB cream, um, went on, brushed it, and then I went and did the beauty, blend, beauty bud. So it gave you a good coverage, but you still could have some redness or anything like that. So I went in and did half my face, if you can see the difference. So I don't have any of those dark circles like I do normally versus over here. You can see like that strong dark circle line here. I don't have that here. So here I'll have that dark long circle and you can really see, <laughs> you can really see my wrinkles in there where this eliminates that. So I still have like that wrinkle, that under thing here, but it's nowhere near like this is. So this is like a solid, solid wrinkle. So this just creates a more flat palette and it eliminates all the redding that I have here versus over here. You can see. And then also right around here is lighter and highlighted versus over here, which is very red. You can see it mostly right here is very red. So I just wanted you to see the difference is just adding a little bit of concealer to it, what it can do to make the, the difference, make the effect. Now I'm going to go on to the other side and finish it up. You don't need to use as much as I use. Um, you can just do it in the idea of where you have problematic areas with the concealer. I never used concealer. It never made sense. It's something that I'm new to and I now officially can't live without. I try to do like a quick makeup in the morning and then I always end up going back and putting concealer on because I am not awake until my concealer is on. Alright, I'm just going to go in my beauty blender and just 
even that out. So that is just using the BB cream and concealer. So using both of them together, both very easy to use because you're really, you're full, you're putting a full BB cream on your face and then you're going back in and you're just touching up your problem areas where you have issues. So for instance, I have this one here right there. If you just go in and blot it, bam, yep, it's gone. Very simple. So it helps eliminate all my redness, and then it helps eliminate uh, any imperfections that I have. All right, and now because I have those really hard wrinkles that are right here, not as obvious now that I have the concealer, but I do have hard wrinkles here, my makeup, like, from constantly open if you ever get like liquid eyeshadow and the crease of your eye collects all of it and pinches it in there I get the same thing under my eyes here which is why I think I always stayed away from concealers because it never worked for me until I got myself the translucent setting powder so this is the setting powder it's translucent when you put it on it just sets your makeup and just holds it there so it won't move throughout the day. It'll make your makeup stay on longer. This will also eliminate that moisture dewy look to it. Not necessary. I mean, not a lot of people use this and it's fine. I just really had a big problematic area there. And then with the BB cream, it gives you like that nice glow moisture. I really like matte looks. So that's the only reason that I do it. Glow, everyone does them, and they look absolutely gorgeous. It's just not my forte. So that is with the BB cream. And then I showed the BB cream with half concealer and how easy it is to use. And then obviously finished it off to even it out. So I'm like a crazy person. All right. So that is our full face. Uh, all right. So I'm going to go in. I am going to use our beachfront bronzer. I use the sweet and we're going to use this to contour. So why in the world do people contour? I never understood. I actually really judged people that did it. And I feel like a jerk now that I understand. The reason that you contour is when you do your face, you get a complete flat palette. So your lips aren't popping out anymore. Your forehead isn't popping out. You know, now that it's summer, you want to have that nice glow right here. I mean, it's just a complete flat palette. And that's just not what we want these days. You need to create, so like if you put a shadow under here and then blush and then highlight up here, it's going to pull your cheek out and pop it out. It's going to look awesome. So that's what we're going to do. So a lot of people use a sculpting kit with this. I prefer to use my bronzer. It's just easier for me. Um, so I'm going to go in. And you're going to make your duck face. And that's your line. So you're just going to go right here with your line. And don't bring it too far down. And don't bring it too far down this way. So if you put on too much, brush it upwards like so. But you just go in, make your line right here. Okay. And then the same thing over here. Create your line right there. So this looks super bold. Don't worry. If you ever see me do eyeshadow, you know I look like a crazy person until I blend it out. And then you're going to go right here. So this is where your sun hits you. Is Oops, sorry. This is where your sun hits you, is right up here. So you want to create a little bit of a glow. So go on an angle in the corner here, and then just brush it across the top here. You don't want anything to go here because you want to keep that nice and bright. All right, so you just have a little bit of a glow, a little bit of a tan, and then here you want to keep nice and highlighted and with that concealer or BB cream, keep it natural looking. Same here. Same on your nose and your chin. You definitely do not want those to have bronzer on them. You just want to go around your face. So you also want to go under here, which I almost forgot, and your two hard angle marks here and right there. So you're going to do a triangle like this, line here underneath. Now I'm going to go in with my blush. It is the hardest thing to open. So this is our Mineral Moonstruck blush. 
Um, I use the lightest one because if you can't tell, I'm pretty pale. So I use the lightest one. I use Sweet. So it's a warm pink. I absolutely love it. And just to show you, I literally go like this. Like I've had this for months. You can't even see an indent. And that's how it is with all of their products when it comes to foundation, BB cream, eyeshadow, anything. You know, you really don't need a lot. Let me see if I can fix y'all. There we go. So we're just going to go in, just brush. And pull it in. Okay. So see how much color that gave me? And see how that line just disappeared into it? Now it just looks like I have a shadow and it's popping out. So when you first put it on, it looks like... Ugh. And just one brush, that's all it took. So I went from no pink to a lot of pink. So again, one brush. Go right over top of that line. I like to pull up in my hairline just a little bit. I don't know what that is. I don't know a lot of people that do that or if I'm just a crazy person. But everyone does their makeup different. There's nothing wrong with how you do your makeup. Everyone is different. Okay. So now it just looks like I have a shadow on my cheeks popping out. So how can we make it pop out more? That is where my sculpting trio comes in, which is here. So if you remember me talking about this, this on the ends here, this super shimmer color is what's called your 3D cream. So I just come in, I go right here. And I'm just adding a pop. So that when the sun I'm outside and it shines on me or from the office, whatever, it will glow like I have the healthiest skin in the world. Like I have super hydrated, healthy, glowing skin. And I just want to bring it down, right down the bridge of my nose. Why do I want to do that? Because some people want their nose to be a little bit smaller than what it is. So you also put it right here because you want it to shine so your lip pops forward. But then you want to create a shadow underneath that makes it look like your lip instead of being like this is like this so how do you do that all right so i'm going to take my contouring brush and i'm going to go into this dark color right here and just go right in here so see how now my lip looks so much fuller this pops out this looks like it hangs over and the idea of creates a shadow a shadow where there once was not all right. If you are like me also, this is like my new favorite gadget. And I swear that a secret Santa gave it to me because it just showed up. And it's kind of a big deal. We just came out with it a few weeks ago. I have two colors. So I have iridescent, which is like a white color that's a shimmer, and then I have the rose gold. The rose gold, as you can tell, I use a lot more than this one, but just to show you the difference, okay, so you create a nice white highlighter. This color I like with Aquatica colors, so like your blues, your greens, all of that jazz. This is like a warm color, so it's not as bold, but it creates like a nice gold color. I'm, I'm obsessed with this one, so I'm going to go back over here, so, but, sorry. See how I have like a light highlight here? And then over here is more like a warm highlight. So I really like the warm highlight. So I'm gonna go over here and do that again. Just gonna go down the nose. Squeakle, 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 squeakle. And just rub it in. Very, very, very easy to use. So even though it looks like it's taking me forever, it's because I'm talking about it. I mean, I can take an hour doing makeup. I can take five minutes doing my makeup. All depends on all the things I want to do, but I want to show all the different products that can be used on your face. So that is everything on our face. <laughs> so I'm awake. I'm alert. No dark circles. It makes my wrinkles look a lot less there. Um, BB cream gave me a good, I'll say semi full coverage. I could still see my redness a little bit. So I'd gone in with a concealer just to hit those areas, just to smooth out the color. And then I used the beauty blender to also 
massage those out in a sense so there weren't lines. Um, and yeah, that was the whole face. So we're going to do eyes. And what are we going to do today? Do I have any idea what I want to do? Nope. I think I want to keep this informational going. I think today is going to be a do and don't. So we're not really going to be talking specifically about the unique products, but just how to put on. So today, for our example, I am just going to use our palette one and just stay with that and keep it consistent. So I personally have hooded eyes. What are hooded eyes? Hooded eyes are when your forehead or your forehead, your brow sticks out pretty far and it covers up right here, covers up your actual like eyelid. So some people do it a little bit differently. There's things that I'm going to show you that are don'ts that you've seen me do because you know me and my glitter, I love my shimmers. When you have a hooded eye, shimmer's not really your best friend because you don't want the light reflecting off right here because it'll just make it stick out further. And I'll show you what I mean. You really want to stick with mattes. So let's get this bad boy started. Once I find a brush. All right, so this is going to be my don't. This is going to be my do. Again, you can do any of these don'ts because I do some of these don'ts because I like the look and I like how it feels and sometimes in the mood for it. So not that it's wrong. You'll see what I'm saying about what it does to the shape of your eye. So I'm going to go backwards. Not going to do like the whole clean slate thing. So this is palette one. I'm going to go in with fourth bright. I'm going to use a matte color. It's very dark. I don't think I've actually used this color before because it looks like I just broke it in. Okay, so this is my do. So when you use a dark color and you have a hooded eye, you want your dark color. Oh, wait, not doing that. You want it to come above the crease. So you don't want it to be underneath because, like, for instance, you can't see it. You want it to come above the crease so that it hides the fact that you have a hooded eye. So that's why when I say, like, oh, I'm going to start reaching up to my eyebrow when I'm, when I'm blending, that is what I mean is I'm trying to bring it above my crease. So I want it to come up so that you can see it. So let's say I just do this eye. And I do the dark just on the lid and not above the crease or not above here. Oops, sorry. I fell off the screen. So when you do this, see? It's going to cover up your color and it's going to shrink your eye like crazy. So your eye is going to be much smaller looking versus over here. So this looks pinched and closed and this looks more awake and like hello. So that would be the difference between the two there. So one way that you can fix this if you want to have a smoky eye. And the one thing I've learned with this is take that color and do it as well in your crease. So I'll take it. See how I keep starting here and then you see me shimmer down, shimmy down? It's because when you're up here, it makes it, especially with dark colors, a little patchy, a little rough. If you bring your hand down here further, it'll be a smooth transaction, transaction, transition, and it'll create smoother lines. It's a new habit I'm trying to form, so if you see me keep correcting myself, my apologies. 
okay? So if you want to do that smoky eye with a dark color, you have to bring it up higher so that you can see what you're doing. But again, keep in mind, your eye is still going to be a little bit more closed. So another thing that I've learned with this is when you have a hooded eye, the cat eye is your friend. The round look is not your friend. That's why you'll constantly see me like right here, like trying to get get it off right here because it, it turns like, see how it like, turns like this dark patch? I always have issues with that. I never understood why. Lo and behold, hooded eye. So if I took it and I went under here like I usually do and I create a rounded look, I'm going to round this out. See how again, how that's pinching? I'm going to make it at least smooth looking. I'm going to make it look nicer at least. But see how also, so now my eye is even droopier looking. So see how this eye now like pulls down further because of this curve right here? This eye is still staying high and staying raised. So now, not only do I have a hooded eye, I have a hooded droopy eye. All against you. Oh, 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 hey. <laughs> Where are you going? All right. So when you do it over here, you want to create your little patch, but you want to cat eye it. So you want to bring it up into a straight line, and you want to cat eye it. So you want to create like a little bit of a wing. So let me just get my corner going here. Okay, and you just want to wing it out. So you want to see, see the difference? See how this eye is like lifted up and this eye is being drooped down. So that is why the cat eye, that's why the cat eye has become such a thing because it like pulls your face up. It awakens your face a little bit. And that's why people add the liner to make it, you know, better than that. Where when you round it and you have a hooded eye or droopy eyes, it accentuates that droopiness and it just pulls your eye back down. So you want to use this side as a wing to bring your look up. Okay. So let's talk about eyeliner. I'm just going to go in and uh, finish the eye a little bit. Okay. So let's talk about eyeliner. Tui. All right, we're going to use pencil. I wanted to use liquid to show. We're going to use pencil today. Hi, Michelle. Today we are doing hooded eyes. What to do and what not to do. All right, so for this eye, so we're going to continue with the cat eye, which is going to pull your eye up versus over here, which is like a rounded look, which is pulling your hood down and making your eye look droopy. So, <clears throat> sorry, tickle gonna go in right above our eyelashes all right I'm gonna create that little that little spot to pick it up so it'll give me a pickup now we're gonna go backwards because I'm not used to doing it like this <laughs> We're going to go around it with no cat eye. And that's fine. We're going to successfully connect into a cat eye. So see this one? Picks your eye up. It's a nice cat eye. This eye being rounded, again, just accentuates that, that pull down. So the worst thing that you can do 
And I think that maybe this is why I hate it so much. It might not be so much that it irritates my eye. Whew, is if I go in on my wet line. And this works opposite. So if you have super round eyes, which to me, I feel like I do have somewhat round eyes. They might be hooded, but they are rounded. So this kind of works for me, but not really my forte. See how much more pinched this eye is and how much more open this one is? Wait, you just wait. You don't even know. And just add a little bit of white. Now, just add a little bit of white down here. Do you see how much more open this eye is? And how much fuller this eye is? And then how this one is much smaller? If you have a rounded eye, which I do have a rounded eye, it's not as big of a deal. But if your eyes are squinted a little bit, like my eyes were like this, this would be a very small looking eye because I just took away all of really the the shape of my eye. And this will open your eye and it'll wake you up. So I put white on a lot just because it wakes, gives you like a nice refreshed look. And then real quick, we'll go into our brows. And we'll take a look at the finished product and you'll see the difference between the two. I know I look like a crazy person right now. So thanks for sticking by. Hey, Jen. How are you? So I'm going to start with my eyebrow palette. I'm going to start with number two. I'm going to create an underline. Just in case, Jen, you think I look like a crazy person, we're doing do's and don'ts of hooded eyes. These bad boys. So these are my don'ts and these are my do's. All right. And then my trick. Make sure it lines up with the corner of your eye. Draw a nice line. And swing it up. And then we're just going to fill that in. Just to make it thicker looking. Alright. So unlike an eyebrow pencil, you do not need to go in the direction of your eyebrow hairs. All right. And now it looks like I have this big, bold eyebrow. We don't want that. Some people do, and some people pull it off. Not this gal. This gal can't do that. Because see how naturally I don't have eyebrows here? I kind of want it to look better, but at the same time, still natural. Oh, that's fine. Baby rules everything. <laughs> Literally everything. All right, so see how I just lightened it up in the corner here? Just to give it that. So it's a little bit more denser on this side. And it's a little bit more thicker looking, but it still has the same characteristics as this. Because I don't want to eliminate my natural look. I mean, that's, that's huge to me. But I want to completely eliminate it imperfections and pimples and discoloration and dark spots absolutely want to eliminate because those are just no but my eyebrows I kind of want to keep them very natural same as mine whole kit and caboodle so I will lighten it up so this is with the finished eyebrow and without the finished eyebrow so see the difference not finished finished totally different your eyebrows are seriously what define oh man to find your look. <laughs> I lost my, I didn't lose it. I'm sorry. Here's my magnet. It's just no longer sticky. So I don't know what to do with that. I guess maybe get like a Velcro piece and stick it on. All right. So I'm going to go under. All right. I'm going to go with my one, draw my line in line with the corner of my eye. Do a nice outline. Oh, God. 
It's so much harder when your eyebrows need to be done. So much harder. We must have lost her to a baby. I love babies. They're so cute. I always make fun of the ones at my work that have newborn babies because like oh, I have to leave early today because I have to go take my kid to their game and I'm always like I can't wait to have an excuse to leave early and use kids as my excuse for everything I mean they're all legitimate excuses I know that I always bust their bubbles that I always say I can't wait to, can't wait to have a kid so I can use that as an excuse otherwise I can't leave early and I get whatever shifts they throw at me because I have no responsibilities <laughs> And again, just going in, lightening up this corner, the inside. Pixelated. Crud. Really? Ugh. Boo. Thank you, Jen. I appreciate you telling me that. That stinks. <laughs> right? I can't wait. I cannot wait. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Steve and I were talking the other day. I hope you don't mind me talking to you through here like this. And I remember going to the bar with you down by your house and being like, uh, oh, I'm never going to get married or find the guy or, you know, maybe not have kids. And we were all talking about how, like, life can change so crazy. And it was so funny that I was like, you know what's so funny? I'm like, Jen's a prime example. I was like, she found the greatest guy. She moved to Florida. She's the cutest little baby and she's married. And I was like, I'm, we're so happy for you. I just thought we were talking about the other day. I'm like, isn't that so funny how much life can change so dramatically, so dramatically and in such positive ways that you're almost like, oh, I definitely didn't see that coming. Like it, it was awesome. So happy for you guys. One day I will meet this guy who took you away. <sighs> One day. All right, so might as well just finish up the video and put the mascara on. Ignore that this is yellow. I dried out my tube again and I don't wanna buy another tube until I finish my fibers. I'm going to have all these tubies of fibers and no gel. AKA, I'm broke. Well, I'm sorry this video was a bust. Leah, I'm going to have to do the video again for you. Oh, stop. <laughs> Are your hormones still crazy? <laughs> oh, it's just so cool. You've always deserved the best. Like, seriously, no one would ever have a bower to say to you or say about you. Oh. You just busted your butt off. Well, I hope you're not going through the crying part right now. Are you guys planning a trip to come back up? Look at me. Because I'm a big deal. <laughs> ah. So the two-step process would be putting the gel on, which these little fibers will stick to, and then sealing them with the gel or a form of mascara. And then we're just going to do another one. 
just to make these babies go to the roof. Oh my god, I would kick their ass. Ooh, I don't think I can curse. I would kick their ass. I still would curse. That would make no sense. Oh my god, I got my car accident. You helped me out with my massage and my therapy. You helped Bobby O'Neill out. I mean, there's so many things that you did. You were a psychologist at the bar. <laughs> You went with my husband to pick up my engagement ring. Ugh. I feel like I'm my husband and we're married. Us two kids should not, I mean, I don't know. We should totally be married to each other because I don't think anyone else would be crazy as us to marry anybody, or I don't think anyone else would be as crazy as us to marry us. I think that made sense. But I just can't believe it that we're adults and we're married husband and wife. I'm sure you're the same thing. You're like, yeah, I married husband and wife, and there's a screaming baby in my arms. <laughs> I was so crazy. So much good things going on. Oh. Ugh, I'm not going to be able to get that. Will you let me know when you're coming up? Because I will clear my schedule it has to be a night that you're going to the clubhouse because we were <laughs> every time we're in the air we're like we should go to the clubhouse and we're like oh well jen's not there so why but they have good wings but jen's not there <laughs> so we gotta do a night when you get here so overall trying to show what do and don't for hooded eyes so originally we had it so we had just the dark color underneath right here. What day? Oh, you picking up the ring? <sighs> it's such a cool experience. I'm so glad you were a part of it. So, so glad. Couldn't imagine anyone better. So, back to this before we get all emotional. Um, so we don't want to do the rounded eye because it's going to make it droopy and pull down. I'm okay doing the black pencil because I have a rounded eye. But if you didn't and you had a droopy eye, that would actually close your eye and droop it down further. Doing a cat eye when you have a rounded eye really helps pick it. I'm sorry. Doing a cat eye when you have a hooded eye or a droopy eye helps pick your whole eye up. And you want to make sure that the dark color transfers above your crease so you can see dimension. Otherwise, it is totally not going to show. Also, if you have a hooded eye, try, excuse me, try to stay away from shimmers. I don't prefer to stay away from shimmers. That's, I, I love glitter, so I can't stay away from shimmers, but you're supposed to because then the light will reflect off your hood here and it will actually cause your eyes to, you know, your eye, your forehead to pop out, which is not what you want. So I'm cheating. I haven't used this lipstick in a really long time. It was one of my favorites. And there was a lot on there. This is where blotting is needed. I know, strange way to blot. But this color is a little too bold for me. Not bold, I should say dark. So there we go. This is our look today. We did our do's and don'ts and we did our full face. So that is it. Uh, thank you again for joining. For those who don't know me and you're watching the rerun and it's your first time seeing me, my name is Brittany Jones and uh, I'm a yellow status presenter with Unique. Um, if you want to see any of the products, 
you can go to my website at beyourunique.com. Uh, it's B-E-Y-O-U-R and then unique spelled with U, so Y-O-U-Nique.com. I do have it posted, so if you have any questions or have any requests, let me know. Private message me. Stop it. This is going to get emotional. <laughs> um, private message me uh, if you have any questions. Um, I did have a request today to do the BB cream and see it at different levels, so that's why I chose to do that today. And then since we were in, like, teaching and everything, we, I, so I went on with my do's and don'ts. So let me know what you think of the do's and don'ts. Maybe I can do some with the products and then some where I'm just teaching, like, a new lesson on something. I think that would be kind of fun to mix in, make it a little bit different. But this is your don'ts, brings your eye down, makes it droopy. This is your do's, picks it up. Thank you so much for joining. It was so nice talking to you, Jen. Thank you for joining. And give the little one a little kiss for me when she's not screaming her head off. <laughs> and I'll go back to the video see if I have to do this again because it was skipping. But otherwise, everyone have a wonderful night. Thank you so much for joining. Bye. Mwah.